The intent of this video is to show how you can do daylight simulations and daylight optimizations with inside EcoCheck analysis. So we'll look at input parameters, how the tool calculates output and visualization, and try to give you some insights on daylight simulations with inside EcoCheck. I've now opened the EcoCheck environment and we're going to take a look at how we can optimize our design and simulate daylighting with inside EcoCheck. Just to start out, I just took in this really nice project from Henning Larsen Architect, which is a net zero building that has really implemented a lot of the cool things about shading design, daylight simulations, atriums, baffles, etc. So if we go to the cutoff here, you'll see that we really have a nice distribution of daylight within inside the building. The reason for optimizing the daylight levels within inside the building is really that about 20% of our energy needs is used for lighting up our building with artificial lighting. So be able to increase the amount of daylight coming into the building means that we can decrease the electrical bill and thereby making it more sustainable. So to show how this is really working, I'm just going to close this project down and I'm going to a very simple example here. So the way that we are calculating daylight with inside Ecotech is a lot of time really using these, uh, this analysis grid here. One important thing is to make sure that the directional error is pointing from the inside to the outside so that we don't have any reflections coming into the room and to have a boundary insert of the grid to not have any pollution from the outside to the inside. And as well, if we have multiple rooms and we have one room with a lot of daylight and some roo rooms with lesser daylight, it's really difficult to, to visualize the grid in a way that it makes sense. So let's just go to the analysis grid here and let's turn it off. And then what I want to do is I'm just marking out the area where I want to place my grid and I'm using the outer fit here within selected objects, the axis, choosing a boundary insert as mentioned before and a specific cell size. Say so OK. So now you see that the grid really fitted in here and if you go to the 2D slice you'll see that it's really consisting of different levels. I want to go to about 760 which is about desk height and the next thing I'll do is make sure that my climate di data are updated and then you're ready to do your daylight simulation. So let's go into lighting design, choose natural daylight over the analysis grid and if you choose 3D volumetric, I'll do that, it will kind of make the grid in different heights to, to kind of make a 3D grid. So let's go to next, see how many rays will be ray tracing the geometry. I'll set this to low to speed up this video. And then the design sky luminance, which we can have help to calculate from the Trinkelance formula or the model latitude. So let's choose the sky conditions. And it's really important to say that it's quantitative daylighting we're doing with inside Ecotech because it's only depending on geometry, glazing radius and glazing materials and material properties in general. So let's go to next. And you can really apply two different methods. Increase accuracy mode, which is taking into consideration glazing materials, reflections of external obstructions, etc. And the regular method. So in the startup process, I want to use this method down here because it, we might not have defined all the parameters for materials, etc. So I just want to look at the geometry, making sure that the geometry allows a good amount of daylighting and with a good distribution with inside the building. And then on a later stage, go in and work with my materials and glazing properties, etc. So let's just take next and just say OK. And now you could take this for calculating the daylight levels for the different heights of the grid. And those things can be set up here in grid management. How many cells, the height where the simulation starts, and how high it should be, and how many num how many cells it should be in the set direction here. Okay, so let's go down to let's say 700, 800. Okay, and look at our results here. So if we go to the top, we can see that there's multiple ways that we can animate this. We can show grid lines, we can shade the grid, we can show the contours, we can clip to the minimum value displayed here. Let's say that to five, for example, and then we can say clip to that. Good. We just need to right click one time there. So this is one of the genius thing with inside Ecotech that you're really allowed to use this an, an, as an identifier looking at the distribution of light within inside the room in comparison to the, the geometry. So when this is done you can you can also apply a 
full 3D volumetric if you want to do that. So th that's a bit more tricky here. Let's go, sorry, like that. So you'll see it really makes a, a, a full 3D grid from the inside the building. Let's go here. We can also show it in 3D to have kind of visualized where we'll have a lot of um, a lot of daylight coming in. And we can also look at daylight levels, which is a bit more qualitative. And we should be around 250 to 2000 looks to be with inside a reasonable amount of light. Are we going above that? will prob have probability to have glare. Good. So you can also export the analysis grid so you can pull it back in as model analysis data as a GRD file, quite effective to save multiple simulations. And if you turn on the grid here, the, you can also do some performative functionality to really say, okay, I want a 5% daylight factor at this point. And you can go to your script commands and take this to rich in here and just say, okay, I want a 5% daylight factor at that point. How big should my window be? Okay. So this is something that you can apply and just helping you to figure out the amount of glazing to have the right interior conditions with inside your building.